What's up, everybody? As promised, I said I would go live today. So we'll let uh we'll let a few people get on here that I told that I will be doing this. Told a few people. And let's see here. I didn't know you could even have special guests on here, so I may hop hop some people in the box. So I got a little cheat sheet here. It's gonna try to keep me on track. Uh, but I've had a lot of people asking me to do this. Um, so I'm gonna let a few people get on here, which I don't think it really matters. Uh, I guess you can go back and watch it. But I've had quite a few people commenting through the last, I guess it's almost been, uh, we're approaching uh, two years. And I uh, went live last January and I went live, um, let's see, last January and last February, March. And you'd be surprised how many people, I mean, so many people don't know about much of our foundation, which is pretty sad uh, if you ask me. But I'm going to try to refrain from uh, wordy dirds. I'm going to try to refrain from calling people names. I'm going to try to refrain from things like that, even though it's a lot of my personality. And I think if you get to know people's personality sometimes, uh, you would understand um, you know, that people with personalities, most of the time it's because they care. Um, but I'm going to try to, uh, to do that because I know my mom might be watching and I have some family members that might be watching. So I'm going to try to refrain from saying words like stupid and dumb and all these other things. But it's also going to show you the mind of a veteran and the heart of a veteran, a veteran who served for all the right reasons. Um, and you know, this isn't an attack on veterans and it's not an attack on people who served in the military, but we have a reason of why you serve. And if you don't understand that the very premise of military has a law, we have our own laws in the military. We have our own law separate from federal law. So anyways, I got my little cheat sheet here. It's going to keep me on track. Um, some things happened in the last week or two that so many people are asking me about. And a lot of people don't know um, that, one, I was in the military. A lot of people don't know that I actually held top secret clearance. Um, and, you know, so I'm going to address a few things. Last year, I tried to talk to a few people, um, a couple of people who I thought were friends. Um, and all I got were things like, are you off your meds today? Um, and all kinds of uh, very, very rude responses, which not only were childish, but also were pretty pathetic from the fact that just because you don't know somebody and just because you don't know, uh, you know, law and things like that, you don't attack a veteran and you don't say things like that to a veteran. And I know that if you don't know that person, you could think all kinds of things. But when a veteran quotes military law, when a veteran quotes military regulations, when a veteran quotes military symbolism that you can tangibly go look up via the Constitution, via federal law, via U.S. codes, when a veteran quotes that and you come in someone's inbox like that, especially someone that you considered a friend, you are a pathetic disgrace. I will say that. You're a disgrace to this nation. So, I hope you're watching because you're still a friend of mine on Facebook. I didn't delete you and I didn't remove you from here. The other problem we have in this country are people who don't respect veterans, who don't respect military. And I don't care if you got a cousin, an auntie, a daddy, a pappy, a whomever. I don't care. Cool. Kudos to them for serving. But if they don't know military law, if they don't know military regulations, if they don't know military symbolisms, if they don't know military optics, if they don't know military operations, then why they serve? You know, and that's where we are right now. That's where we are. It's a sad, sad travesty and a disgrace that so many Americans have no clue about the foundation of this country in which you live in. So that's where we are. If you don't like 
this country and you don't like the foundation, you probably need to get out of here because what you're facing are people like me who do know the foundation, who do know the principles of our nation. And that's where we are. So I'm going to tell you by law, military law and federal law, how Donald Trump is still your president by law, by regulations, and by operations. Yes, I said it. I'm about to show you how Donald John Trump is still your president. It was not a secret. It was not top secret. It wasn't hidden. It happened right in front of every one of you. It happened right in front of your eyes. Right in front of you. And all these other people out there, a lot of this stuff is called what we call optics. It was optics. So you're going to have to be able to step outside, step outside of your opinions, step outside of your livelihoods, step outside of whatever it is you believe, whether you're a Christian, whether you're an atheist, whatever it is, whether you're gay, straight, whatever you are, none of that has anything to do with your freedoms. It actually has everything to do with your freedoms. So it's, it's kind of a cool kind of double standard in a good way. None of it has anything to do with your freedoms, but they all have something to do with your freedom. The Constitution protects you as a whole. And too many years, we've had too many people who not, they misconstrue it, they misuse it, and overuse to fit their narrative versus being a true, true constitutionalist who is for everybody, not division. Okay, so Republican, Democrat is a, a division. And I can show you where it divided by law. Okay, so let me get back here. Military versus federal law. Two separate laws. The military has a total separate law than you civilians. Totally separate. And if we went by military law, if we applied military law to civilian standards, you people would straighten up pretty quick. And let me show you a great example. So if I married a girl and I cheated on her in the military and she went to my commander and he court-martialed me, you get court-martialed, you go to court, you know what they put on you? They put on adultery, they strip you of your rank, they also put it on your record for about seven years. So if you're out riding around and an MP pulls you over and he says, Mr. Johnson, what are you doing out at 3 a.m.? Did you just get off duty? No. Well, where were you? They can question you. And if they find out your butt was in a bar somewhere and you got a wife at home, guess what's on your record? Imagine applying that to civilian. Imagine all, I wouldn't have to get on Facebook every single day and watch all these girls post about how every guy is a dirtbag and a cheater and a this and a that. Could you imagine that? That would straighten up some dudes pretty quick. Our foundation, military law, military regulation. So let's go back before I show you how Donald John Trump is still your president by law. Not because of voter fraud, by law. Okay? Happened right in front of you. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So, foundation. Sorry, Marines. I got a bunch of Marine buddies. I love you. You guys are the best. You really are. You train in every kind of environment and you guys are bad boys and bad girls. But the Army was founded first, June 14, 1775. Guess what was founded shortly after? June the 30th, 1775, the very first 69 articles of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is military law. The Navy wasn't founded until October the 13th, 1775, and the Marines came along November the 10th, 1775, long before the Declaration of Independence and long before the Constitution. 12 years before the Constitution. How is that so hard to comprehend? And we have so many Americans who have no clue about our foundation and whine, complain, and gripe, and moan on Facebook all day about gas when the president don't even control gas prices. He controls other things via his policy, but the gas companies have to change based on those policies, even though all of this stuff is optics. So let me get back on the freaking thing here. The other thing is law or not. You've got to decide, do you support the foundation? Do you support the Constitution? Do you support the Declaration of Independence? And do you support military law and the foundation? 
or do you want to change it like most people do in this country? That's what you have to decide because there's a lot of guys like me and gals like me who want it to stay like it is and let's repair what we have versus getting out on the battlefield again and doing what our revolutionary fathers did. See, I don't think y'all, I don't think anybody's thought that through. Our founders declared the Declaration of Independence Ju July 4th. It was actually written in June, but July 4th, 1776. Okay. They fought another seven years before the war was over. They declared independence back here seven years before we actually won the war. Do you realize how big that is? Do you understand that? They declared independence seven years before they actually won the war. Then it was another four years before the Constitution came out. So imagine what that battle was about. Think about all the people who had to write that and get that legislated and passed. Okay? So you have to understand, you have to decide what side of the line you're on. That's what you have to decide. And if you're on our side then you need to understand the foundation and you need to understand law, military law, military regulations and symbolizations. Okay. It's real simple, real simple. Okay. Also, we, the people, we, the people, we, the people created a law. We, the people created government. We, the people created police. We, the people created all these things. You, the person are the one who, oh, God help me. You the people, you the people, just like the stupid mask, the stupid freaking mask. Nobody can tell you to wear a mask. It's not a law. It's not a federal law. Nobody. And that's where you are a sheep if you did that. Oh, you weren't paying attention. All this happened right in front of you. So let me get to the meat of it. What you're witnessing, what every American has witnessed since January the 20th, 2017, is a covert operation. Now, I am not violating clearance by what I'm about to spill to you. This all happened via law. It all happened right here via law. So I'm not going to spill. I don't have to get into any kind of thing like that to reveal what happened right in front of you. You, the American, have a responsibility to research and read law and orders. Okay, and data shows that 75%, this is mind blowing, data shows that 75% of Americans cannot name the three branches of government. You can't just name them. Just name. Oh, let me think. Executive, legislative, and judicial. <laughs> cannot name the three branches of government. 50% of Americans cannot take a blank canvas to the United States and fill in their state. 50% of Americans cannot take a blank canvas to the United States and fill it in. But all oh, we got to get on Facebook and whine and gripe about a president who ain't even president by law. Happened right in front of you. It happened right in front of you. So I'm going to break it down to you. Covert operation. It was never going to be told to you because Donald Trump, everything that Donald Trump said on campaign trail in 2016 has all, every single thing has come to fruition. Every single word, every single law, every single order, everything. Everything has come to fruition. And the one thing he said, one of the key things that he said on stage one night he, he said three different things, okay? This is very key. I sat with an old Marine recently, 19, uh, let's see, he was born, he's 84 years old. He was served in the 50s. And these people put he and I together. He hadn't been paying attention. When I told him these key words, his eyes lit up and he goes, oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. I was like, yes, sir, it's happening. And it it was all started in your lifetime, and it's happening right now, right in front of everybody, and only me and you understand it, but it's up to me and you to relay to the people what's going on, because the people need to know this, and the people need to get outside of their opinions and to, to sit back a little bit and listen to military of what's going on, okay? So Donald Trump was on campaign. There was like, it was the time when there was like 25 Republicans running for president, and 
he's up there, and that was up on purpose. They had all those people on stage on purpose. Jeb Bush said, who's going to vote for you? Who's going to support you? And who's going to back you? And my man, my man, my smart-ass man, President Trump, said this. He said, that's a loaded question. It's more than one question. And if I have time, I will answer that. One, people are tired of bullshit politicians like you. Every one of you on this stage has been in office no less than four years. And every one of you gets up here and you tell the American people everything they want to hear, but you never back it up. Then he went on to say, who's going to support me and who's going to back me? I have over 200 generals right now backing me. That was a quote unquote conspiracy theory made by the left for all these years. It wasn't a conspiracy theory. In the military, 200 generals have said and passed down to other generals that if they ever got a chance to throw a coup, a good kind of coup, and take over and reset to the foundation of America, that they would take this country back over and reset it on its foundation, which is also written in the Declaration of Independence. Because you people don't read out there. 99% of Americans aren't reading the things that matter and the reason why you're in America. Okay? So 200 generals said that. He also said this. We have it all. We've caught them all. Well, what did he mean? We have it all. We've caught them all. About to show you. They were never going to show you because he also said on that stage this. Very critical thing. If you want to know what happens in the military, you can join. But never again will we announce to our enemies what is going on. Never again. We're not going to say, hey, Saddam, we're coming to bomb you. Hey, Osama, never again. Never. And that's the problem we have right now. We have a disconnection between Americans and veterans. You all think we're stupid, we're ignorant, and we're a bunch of grunts who have no brains, okay? And it sucks to have to brag on yourself, but because of that fact, because we have a disconnect here, it's important to understand some of us know more than you. Some of us are smarter than you, and it ain't because you can't comprehend, it's just because you don't want to and you're too lazy, and you don't want to read, and your attention spans suck. Your attention spans are about two minutes long according to marketing data, so you want a five-minute explanation on a 200-year problem. And it cannot be done. And the only way that we can get control of this freaking place is for you to understand what's going on, but for also do you understand your foundation and law. And it's not that difficult. If I can learn it, you can too. But I've been studying it a long time, and you don't have to be an attorney to understand law. You don't have to be an attorney to interpret the law. You just have to freaking open a book and read it. That's why they pass laws. That's why we have three branches of government. Write the law, pass the law, interpret the damn law. It's real simple. All right, mama, I'll quit. I won't say anything. I won't, I'll try not to cuss anymore. But it just... This is the heart of a true veteran. Everything in the military has a symbol. And when I die, when my daddy dies, when my grandpa died, they put a flag over his casket for a reason. And they fold it and they hand it to a spouse or whoever's your next in line loved one. And they say, thank you for their service on behalf of a great nation. And we're not a great nation anymore when you got people coming in an inbox saying, have you taken your meds today? When this heart right here and this brain served in the military for all the right reasons. And when we even have veterans, when we have veterans telling another veteran that this ain't happening. When I'm sitting here witnessing everything by law happening. So, covert operation means... There's a big operation going on behind the scenes that you, the people, had no clue about. You could have if you've been paying attention, had you known law, had you known regulation, had you known optics, had you known symbols. You could know, but we've gotten too lazy in this country for the past, especially 30 years, and especially it seems like the better technology gets, the dumber Americans get, the more lazy. You have everything in the palm of your hand 24-7. The average screen time is eight hours. 
And we have 99% of America who have no clue what's going on right now. And I'm also pissed for the fact that we have publications out there. You have Rumble, you have Telegram, you have um, a few others out there, True Social even, and none of these guys are telling you, the people, about law and regulations and symbols that were not secretive. None of it were secretive. It happened right in front of you by law. And I'm going to reveal to some of those right now. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I had to set up the foundation of our nation in order for you to understand that laws... Our nation is a nation of law and order. It's that simple. When you get a divorce, you go and guess what happens? By law, you're going to run down. The attorney's going to tell you, this is what we got to go by. This is law. They go by facts. They go by law. The other thing you got to understand real quick, if I can jump over real quick before I tell you how Donald Trump is still your president and the military is in full and complete control of this nation. Real quick, let me jump back over. By law, in U.S. law, I have everything in documents. I have six documents right now that are blowing up out there. There's guys on Rumble. There's guys on True Social that are using my documents because everything I wrote in them, there's six documents. It's about 500 pages. Not all that is text. Some of those are pictures. But I've got about 500 pages. I wrote off the top of this head right here, military law, military regulations, constitution, and federal law, and U.S. codes. But by law, by law, the United States of America became a corporation in 1871. And throughout the years, you've had people try to misconstrue and, and blindfold you and tell you that Ulysses S. Grant went bankrupt in his personal life, but not the presidency, which is wrong. He bankrupt America. He signed a treaty of 1871. The District of Columbia became its own country. It is in the law books. I have every link known to man to .gov and the Constitution for you to read it. It specifically says in 1871 that the District of Columbia became its own country, not a state, not a city. It became its own territory. And in the military, we call it a foreign territory, which is why D.C. has its own National Guard. All by law, all right in front of you. Now, they did make it difficult for the average person to get on Google and go find these links because they didn't want you to know that. And you haven't known that all these years. 99% of you watching just heard that for the first time in your life. And... You know, I'm not beating you up for that fact, but here's the other thing. 1871, guess what else happened? My attorney won't like this, but it's okay. It's a fact. 1871, guess what happened? The bar exam. They created the bar. Well, what does the bar mean? You hear all your attorney friends saying, I got passed the bar today. Hey, I took my bar exam. I, I passed the bar. No one stops to think, what does the bar represent? British Accreditation Registry. Didn't we fight the British to, to gain our independence? So why are our attorneys registering with the British Accreditation Registry? Imagine that. So when you think of all the years that you've been alive, however old you are, when you think of all the years you you watching the news, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, all these places, and you have two attorneys sitting side by side who study the same law. They get on there side by side and they disagree with something written in a book. That's where we are. And that's where you, the people, have to understand that America is an idea. It's on a piece of paper and it's written in, on a piece of paper and it's in the Smithsonian. America is an idea that we have to fight for every single day. You can't get lackadaisical and you can't get lazy like we've been the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. You can't get lazy. It's a fight every single day. So everybody's texting me every day and I love everyone I text and I talk to. But everybody asks, when's this coming to an end? When's this coming to an end? When's this coming to an end? It don't ever end. It's always a fight. But we can get to a level that we can sustain and get back to where we are and then every other country be happy. We're happy and we have fair 
in reciprocal trade, as President Trump said, because we're in a world of international trade now versus every country without Internet and all these other things like it used to be years and years ago. Now we're in international trade. We're in a different society. We are everybody's woke. Everybody's got cell phones. Everybody's got technology. So we can work on what we have. But everything happened right in front of you. So let me show you why Donald Trump is still your president. See, and the other thing we have, I've got, I guess, probably 3,000 people on my Facebook. And I got 12 people watching. This is how pathetic we are of a nation. It's the same thing with my music. My PI, oh man, you know, oh, I love you. I love your music. I can tell by data who listens to my music. I can, I can sit and I can say, you're lying. And that's where we are as a nation. And we have people who don't want, they, they just don't even want to listen. They don't want to share the, the things that are correct. They don't want to share things that matter. All right, here we go. All you 11 watching. Donald John Trump signed probably the most historical and monumental piece of paper since the Declaration of Independence. It was executive order, and executive order is the highest law of the land because it's automatic order by the president. President Don, Donald John Trump signed executive order 13848, September the 12th, 2018. Inside that order, he specifically issued a national emergency. He also issued maritime law. And he also issued an election fraud committee, and he put inside of there the dates of which they would correspond. All right. How did Donald Trump? Now let me let me let me go let me go back real fast. The American public didn't learn about voter fraud until December 2020, which was after the election. How did Donald John Trump? No, to issue a national emergency and issue maritime law to go into effect on November the 3rd, 2020, which is inside that order. The specific date of November the 3rd, 2020 is inside the order that he wrote September the 12th, 2018. How did he know to issue a national emergency and to issue maritime law to go into effect two years, be two years before? How? How did he know that? What you need to understand what a national emergency is. A national emergency is when a, pre when a president issues a national emergency, guess what has to happen by law? Also by law. A president, when he issues a national emergency or a presidential emergency, it has to be, must be addressed by that Congress. Not Congress two years down the road. Not Congress five years down the road. That Congress. That Congress did not address any of his emergencies, much less the one he put in executive order. None of them did. Okay? That was all also an optic in a different way. I'll get to optics later, but right now I'm laying down the laws and the facts. Executive Order 13848 did all those things. Maritime law is the law of water. Okay? He issued maritime law. Well, you guys, if you go down to a car dealership right now, they don't have many cars on their lot. Why? Maritime law. The ships are at bay because of maritime law. President Trump's executive order specifically says no foreign goods will enter the United States of America by law. The ships have not moved. They're still there. And you Americans are so spoiled and so rich in this country. The poorest American is the richest anywhere else. You're so spoiled in this country. What you're, what you're witnessing you right now as the warehouses and warehouses deplete and they deplete and they deplete. As they keep depleting, the prices go up on food. Because why? Those goods are not going to enter the United States of America. Also because they're being guarded by the National Guard, which I'm going to get to in a minute. That happened right in front of you. Executive Order 13885. Donald John Trump spurred off. They got the, they, it's all optics. Everything you're watching via Fox News is fake. Everything you're watching via CNN is fake. It's garbage. It's all an act. 
Everything you're watching on any kind of mainstream news is being controlled by the military, which I'm going to show you how and why. But it's being controlled. Donald Trump signed Executive Order 13885, which is the National Quantum Act, the National Quantum Initiative. He also issued an act for it. He also has uh, a few other things that back it called the National Emergencies Act. OK, but it's called the Quantum Dot gov. You can go to it. You can, you can click off here in a minute. Quantum.gov. Okay. The mean, the mainstream media and all your liberals out there call it the Q. The Q noners. If you hadn't heard that yet, you will hear that. They call us the Q, the Q noners. Well, why did Trump sign an executive order called the Quantum Initiative? Okay. And then he signed an act called the National Quantum Act. And then September 2021, who's president right now? Who do y'all think is president? Who really ain't by law? But the government website launched September 2021, quantum.gov. And on there, you'll see Trump's executive order, and you'll also see the Quantum Act. All right, quantum system. Executive Order 13959, signed November the 12th, 2020, right after the election. He signed an executive order that specifically said, effective immediately, January the 11th, 2021, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, in an executive order, all that's written, anyone who is funding the Chinese Communist Party, assets will be frozen effective immediately. And as soon as that happened, guess who stepped down? Bezos stepped down from Amazon. Warren Buffett left the uh, Bill Gates Foundation. Bill Gates and his wife announced the divorce. Mark Zuckerberg started dumping stocks. I have a link that shows you live stocks. Mark Zuckerberg has, do he has dumped stocks every single day since January the 11th, 2021. He has dumped a stock every single day worth $25 million. Where were you? Where have you been? That's the question I have for a lot of you out there. Not you innocent people watching, but a lot of you who've been smart asses in my inbox. Where have you been? Who is actually smarter than you? Who is actually in the know? Because I guarantee you weren't reading law and things that matter. Okay? So I do get a little, I get a little edge, edgy on that. Executive Order 13959. All right, GameStop also lost their rear ends. I mean, we can keep going. I mean, there's been over 1,300 CEOs step down. Over 1,300 CEOs since January 11th. Look at all the people who've been fired from CNN. You know, you're witnessing it, but you just, you're not, you need to see the 40,000 view up like you're sitting in a plane looking down versus just every day. And some of you can't do that. You just got to look down and go, holy crap, look at all this stuff that's happened. Law. It happened by law. Donald Trump did it. And the military did it. He didn't write all those orders by himself. The military is in control of this. All right. And the best one. Executive Order 13919. Executive Order 13848 is the best one. And this one is also the best one for military. You're going to love this. Executive Order 13919, after Congress did not address Donald Trump's national emergencies and presidential emergencies, Donald Trump signed Executive Order 13919 on April the 20th, 2020. And in that order, he gave the Secretary of Defense full authority to activate the reserve components of the military. A lot of you don't even know what goes on on one day in the military, much less the National Guard, much less the reserve components. We have never in the history of the United States of America activated all 50 states at one time. And it happened right in front of you. It happened right in front of you. It's exciting for guys like me, and I wish it was a lot more visual. That's my opinion on it. I wish it was more visual. I wish we were in military law. I wish we were in freaking full-fledged martial law for some of you. But at the same time, because many of you would not understand that, and you wouldn't understand some of the stuff you'd see, 
They've tried to control this and they tried to stay back as much as they could and operate at a slower pace and control this versus coming full-fledged in and a lot of you who don't even understand. You don't understand what goes on. And you dang sure wouldn't make a comment to a veteran who served for all the right reasons, who served for honor, integrity, loyal, uh, duty, everything. You wouldn't be in my inbox saying, are you off your meds today? That's the bull crap we're dealing with in this country. So right in front of your eyes, you witness Donald Trump activate the National Guard to federal duty. And I cannot tell you how many dependas, we call them, those are people who are married to people in the military. That's not what happened. The president don't control that. The governors do. If the governor had control of the military, do you know how many times our country would have effed up by now? Do you, do you realize the power trips that some people would have if they actually had that power? Whew, man. By regulation and military law, the only person who can activate the National Guard to federal duty, they called it federalizing, is the President of the United States of America. And how and why did 99% of Americans sit and believe and even have a conversation with me that Nancy Pelosi, the Dane Speaker of the House, activated the National Guard to federal duty? Get the you-know-what out of here. You know what kind of insult that is to a veteran who served for all the right reasons, who knows military law? Just because my service got cut short and I didn't get to serve 20 years like your cousin or your freaking uncle who was a colonel, Miss You-Know-Who, someone's probably going to watch this. I saved you just for that reason because I knew I would roast you sooner or later. Just because I wasn't a colonel in the military does not mean Jack Dilly shit. That's the last word I'm going to use, Mom. I'm sorry. But it don't mean shit to my brain and my brother's and my sister's brains out there. It all depends on what you're reading and what you're studying. It's sickening where we've gotten in this country. It's sickening. People who die for this country. People who die for this country. Look at all the memorial graves out there. There's thousands of them. Arlington is not the only one. There's thousands of graves all over this country. Who died for you? 17, 18, 19 years old. I have a cousin who just turned 18 who died in Vietnam for you. For you to make stupid and ignorant comments. I have a best friend who, who was an orphan, an orphan. He joined the military because he said that was the only thing he could think of that would give his parents that adopted him the gratitude for what they gave him. And people like you want to get in my inbox and say bullshit like that. And you want to say it everywhere else. You're a disgrace to this country. Take your happy ass to a memorial cemetery and look at how old those kids were that died for you to have your life. That's why we're this country right now. That's why we're jacked up. Because people like you don't even know the foundation. It's sickening. You're a disgrace to this country if you think like that. <sighs> Donald John Trump activated the National Guard to federal duty right in front of all of you. And you want to make comments about Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. Now, think of that. Speaker, let that, let that, just let it come out to you. A House of Representatives, Speaker of the House, House of Representatives. Get on national TV and you listen to her when you should have been going, holy hell, do you realize what's going on? 
The National Guard just got activated to federal duty. The states all over these states went to D.C. You should have been thinking, holy hell, D.C., the District of Columbia, is its own country. You should have been going, oh my gosh, this is freaking monumental. The president just activated National Guard to federal duty. While Nancy Pelosi and all of them were telling you, even if you didn't know all, even if you didn't know what I knew, you should have been going, holy crap, this is awesome. And they stayed there till March the 3rd, 2021. They were there for the inauguration. But they stayed till March the 3rd, which was an optic. Glad you said that, Derek. I'm glad you know law, Derek. I'm glad you know history, Derek. Because guess what? The original inauguration date in United States history was what? March the 4th. Woo! Guess who's president? And not because of voter fraud. Because of Executive Order 13848. Because of Executive Order 13885. Because of Executive Order 13959. And 13919. In which he did. January the 6th. All of you were distracted, see? You're so used to drama in this country. You're so used to the Kardashians. And you're so used to all this bull crap that don't matter. Yellowstone and Ozark and all these things. You're so distracted in life. You're so distracted on things that are fun. Alabama football, Auburn football, recruiting, this, that, and other. Those are privileges. Those are not necessaries. Those are privileges. Those are privileges that you get. Okay? You're so distracted over here, and you see this quote-unquote insurrection. Well, let me tell you something. In the Declaration of Independence, because you... You all want to thank veterans. You all want to get on your Facebooks. You all want to get on your social medias on July the 4th and on Veterans Day and on Marine Day and on Army's birthday and all these dates. You want to thank the soldiers for their service and you want to pat us on the back. But when it comes to military law and military regulations, y'all don't want to hear that. So you all want to get on there and look cool and make your little posts. But you don't even know the very foundation of your country. The Declaration of Independence specifically says in the Declaration of Independence that we the people have the right to alter or abolish any government that goes against its foundation and reset it up on what? The original foundation, which was what? Our revolutionary fathers who fought a revolutionary war and fought the British and kicked their ass and we established what? A constitution. How hard is that? January the 6th was a setup. You're going to see it down the road. You're not going to see it right now, but you're going to see it down the road. I hope I live to see it. I hope that I live to see all your faces go, holy crap, don't come running to me. I'm not trying to build a platform. I'm not trying to get popular like all these Charlie Kirk and all these people. I'm not trying to do that. I have a buddy right now. His dad's probably watching. The dude's got 2.4 or 5 million followers on Instagram. He has the right and he has access to, t to help people every day to show them by law what's going on. Does he? No. And, and, you know, I'm not upset. I don't want to cause any grief with the guy. I'm just saying that I don't want a platform. I'm just a veteran who knows military law, who knows military regulation, who knows the Constitution, who knows federal law, who knows U.S. codes, who knows optics, who knows symbols. I don't want a platform, but I hate seeing people like you worry about your paycheck and worry about what's going on when all you got to do is understand that what you're watching had to happen because we have so many people out there who have no clue about law and regulations, and some of them don't care, and some of them want to change it. So we have to reset that foundation. We have to reset it. And the military took control of this nation. January the 6th was a distraction. Okay? That was an actual constitutional process that our founders made. The founders made it to where you can't just vote for president on one day and go, okay, well, they're the president. No, they put all these extra steps in there. That was a constitutional process. Okay? And there was well enough proof for vo voter fraud. Because why would Donald Trump, once again, write an executive order with all these things in it, a national emergency, maritime law, and all these other things in September the 12th, 2018, that didn't activate until November the 3rd, 2020? That showed you right there they already knew there was voter fraud. They already knew in 2016 that Hillary didn't dump enough votes. Okay? They already knew that. 
These Dominion systems have been cheating Republicans and Democrats on both sides of the aisle way back. That's why Lou Dobbs got fired from CNN way back in 2008. Lou Dobbs at Fox News, which he ain't even there anymore. I think he may be on Fox Business. He got fired from CNN for saying that way back, long before, long before anybody thought about Donald Trump. So you have to, you have to understand this is a constitutional process, but this is also a process you have to keep up with. And you shouldn't get on your Facebook and whine, complain, and gripe over one little comment or post if you're not going to keep up with it. And especially if you're going to say something to someone like me who's trying to help you. I've got all this way up here, all the way down here. I know what's going on. And you can too. It was not a secret. And I would love to help you out. I would love to help all of you out. But you got to be, you got to understand, there's some veterans who serve for the right reasons and who know law, Okay. There's a lot of veterans who went in for paycheck. They went in for medical, dental benefits, college benefits, not only for them, but for their wife, their children. I mean, you can claim all kinds of things in the military. Man, you, you wouldn't believe the kind of incentives you get in the military. Okay, so a lot of people go in just for that. Okay, it's kind of like people who get on welfare system who don't need it. Welfare was created for people who need it. It was created for that. And you get people in there who abuse it. And abuse it, and abuse it, and abuse it, and abuse it. Okay? We've got to get back to a foundation in this country. So let's go back. January the 6th was a distraction for you. It distracted you. January the 6th, what really happened was Donald Trump's Executive Order 13919 went into effect when the Secretary of Defense activated the National Guard. But they didn't show up in D.C., until January the 17th, 2021. The other thing that happened via optic, but also something that only military knows, and also people have tried to misconstrue out there and take off the internet, is the gold fringe flag. Every day since January the 6th, 2021, the gold fringe flag has made an appearance. It is immediately behind every single person related with Congress and the president. It is immediately behind them in every angle and every shot. And it is very, very important. And every time I see that gold French flag, I know my boys are in charge. I know my babies are, are doing their thing because the gold French flag signifies admiralty law, maritime law, which was put in Trump's executive order 13848 way back in 2018 that didn't activate until November the 3rd, 2020, and those dates of that election fraud committee were this. 60 days after November the 3rd, 2020, 60 days brought you to January the 2nd, 2021. Donald Trump knew then that Congress was not going to do anything, so he had his order 13919 activated four days after that date. And then go back to the executive order 13848. The 60 days, which brought you to January the 2nd, there were 60 more days to account for in that order from 2018. 60 days on to January the 2nd is what? Remember what I just said? The original inauguration date in history was March the 4th. March the 3rd, 2020 is when the second 60 days count was. Boom. Imagine if you just knew law. Imagine if you just knew a veteran who knew law, who knew military regulation, who knew military law, the Uni Uniform Code of Military Justice, okay, who knows federal law, U.S. codes, and then goes, boom, there you go, happened right in front of you. January the 6th, Donald Trump activated the troops. They arrived in D.C. January the 17th, 2021. Over 40,000 troops. Okay, and they stayed there until March the third. And all of you say, "Oh, I've had people go." Well, they went back to their states. Yeah, but the order wasn't rescinded. You see, the order wasn't rescinded. And the only way that I'd be able to prove it to you, if I didn't have the proof, if this didn't happen, then I'd have to just sit here and keep preaching law, 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 law. But I have over two thousand pictures in documents. I, I got to update it when I get out of here today. Over 2,000 pictures 
and I'll be updating it every day. And every day I have 2,000 pictures of our National Guard out of their own states and out of this country. They're still in operation. They're still in control. We had Israel in this country this week. We had Morocco. We had Canada. We had Australia. We had Germany. There's a German plane coming into America today. You have to be able to understand who our allies are. You have to understand who Trump made peace deals with in 2020. The whole 2020 year was a peace deal year. He was crowned the king of Saudi Arabia in an actual king ceremony in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, you get all these people who don't understand military operations, you know. So it's one of those things where if you'll talk to me every day and especially get on and look at the operations, you'll see, holy crap, our National Guard. The only way a National Guard, let's say uh, the state of Mississippi, the only way the state of Mississippi National Guard can operate in the state of Alabama or anywhere but we're just going to use two states that are side by side. The only way that the state of Mississippi can be in the state of Alabama is for the president to federalize them. Governors have no control over that except for state emergencies. Hurricane Katrina, 2005, New Orleans, Louisiana. That governor needed, I think, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, and Arkansas. I'm not sure who else responded, but that governor has to go to the state general, adjutant general of Louisiana. And that general has to correspond with all those states that they needed their general or colonel. Sometimes a colonel can be in charge, but they have to correspond with each other. It's called a chain of command for a reason. And the commander in chief is the top of the whole military. That's why you guys have to understand that the military law is separate than federal law. Military law has nothing to do with federal law. The president is president over federal law and is commander in chief over military law. It don't crisscross. That's why they separated them years ago. That's why our first president in United States history was George Washington, who was a general. Whew, man. So it's exciting to people like me because it's like, holy crap, it happened right in front of everybody. And the last time this happened, was Franklin D. Roosevelt, World War II, okay? So the biggest thing to understand, the biggest question I have that I have, the, the, the most trouble I have with people is getting people to understand what optics are and then understanding, well, why would they do this with Biden? Biden is an actor, first off. If you can't look at the pictures that I put on my storyline, 24-hour storyline, if you can't look at Joe Biden and the actor Joe Biden side by side and tell the difference, you need to go see an ophthalmologist very quickly. Uh, you're in trouble right here, okay? And I don't want you on the streets driving. I want to live as long as I can where I can, you know, tell this. You need to go get your eyes checked, okay? So the, the, the explaining that part is, is the hardest part. It's easy to explain, but it's hard for you to understand. But it's called a Commonwealth Act number 671. The last time it happened was World War II, when Franklin D. Roosevelt issued a puppet to be in charge of the Philippines, while the actual president of the Philippines was in what they call exile, in control of his military, and making sure his people were safe. You can look that up by law. Everything that I've told you today is in my documents, though. You don't even have to, you don't have to look it up, okay, because I've said a lot. You don't have to go back and watch this video and type it all out. All you got to do is send me your email address, and I'll put you on the documents, and you can read them. You can view them anytime. No cost, nothing. Just get on there, access it, boom. You can read it anytime, and it's going to take a while, so you have all access to it to read because it wasn't a secret. This isn't some kind of power trip that Derek Johnson has. No, it's military law, military regulations, federal law, and the Constitution. Everybody should know this, not because I wrote it, because it's what's happening. It's happening right in front of you. So you should want to read that. You should want to know what's going on, and you should want to go tell everybody. And you preachers out there, if I got any preachers watching, besides the one I know that's watching, any preachers that are watching, you especially, you are the people, that you are the bell sheep, and you're out there on these churches. I don't understand. I understand you got to study the Bible, and you got you to study. But a lot of you preachers don't even study the Hebrew origin of Jesus Christ, too. 
Okay, that's a whole different topic, and I'm not going to get on that. But you should be telling your people what's going on by law, not by your little opinions and not by your little feelings and none of that. You should be telling people what's going on by law because what's going on by law is exciting. Okay, it's exciting, especially if you're a God-loving, God-fearing, blue-collar, whatever you are in America. If you love America and you're a patriot, you should be excited about this. So you don't need to be spreading fear tactics out there and all these other things. Okay, it's nothing to fear. It's like I told my mother when this first started to happen. I said, look, when I get scared, you can get scared. And I'm not scared. I'm like Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump on the top of the ship, except I'm not yelling at God. I'm going, yeah, baby, let's do this. Because the military is in full control. Okay? The hardest part, once again, is to understand what you're witnessing and what they're doing with the puppet Biden. Okay? That's the hardest part for people to understand. But I can prove it to you. Um, another thing, by law. But we'll get there in a minute. So let's get back one more time to the National Guard. The National Guard can only be activated by the President of the United States of America. They were activated on January the 6th and January 17th, 2021. Those orders have not been rescinded because I have pictures every single day. As early as about two hours ago, we had about oh, probably 22 National Guard activated all over the country. They're all over the country. One of them was coming back from, uh, I think it was Germany. Okay, they can't do that. They, they just can't do that unless they're federally activated. And they have been since January 2021. And it's the gold fringe flag and that. So, you know, it's all by law. I'm just telling you what happened by law. So here's the other thing that makes Donald Trump president by law. There's two different things, two different scenarios I'm going to show you here, which is freaking awesome. Okay. One, the executive orders. Okay. Executive orders, the national emergencies, and the presidential emergencies. Then you have Title 10, Title 32, and you have the Stafford Act. You have the National Emergencies Act. Um, you have a, what they call a, a presidential emergency document, a presidential emergency active document, a PED. That's what they call it. President Trump, the only person who can know what a PED, what's in a PED is the president and the general. Now, the only reason I know that a PED was signed on November 3rd, 2020, was a fact that everything else that happened around it, everything else that happened around it showed me and veterans that know what's going on that a PED was signed because to move it further, and for him to activate all 50 states, a P would have had to been signed, which is a presidential emergency active document. Okay, so a P, and then also the, the sweetest one out of all this, that extended President Trump's powers as president, which is all in law. Every one of those that I just told you are all in law, first off, but is 47 United States Code 246, which is called War Powers of the President. Okay. And it specifically shows his power with active duty, National Guard, everybody. Okay? War powers of the president. The last time it was used in United States history was with Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt served 13 years. Okay? Four terms. He died in office. If he did not die, who probably would have served another at least seven or eight years. Okay? So you have to understand war powers of the president. This is all law. All by law. All of those things extended Trump's powers as president. Okay? The other thing that happened that is so freaking awesome, and I wish we had more viewers, but maybe people will share this, and maybe people, you know, maybe we can get this shared out there. Once again, I'm not trying to make a platform, but this is so freaking awesome. This is the most hilarious. This You couldn't troll anybody any better than what happened on January the 20th, 2021. By military law and by constitutional law, Donald John Trump received the full grade military and constitutionally regulated inauguration ceremony. And I'm going to show you how. Donald Trump, on January the 20th, 2021, was at Joint Base Andrews. All right. He exited Marine One. And this is how particular the military is. As he exited Marine One on the fourth ruffle, on the fourth ruffle of Hail to the Chief, 
which means bah, 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 bah. On the fourth ruffle of Hail to the Chief, the 21 gun salute started. Okay, the highest honor of military 21 gun salute. They do it for president and when you die. Okay, the band that was playing Hail to the Chief was the presidential salute battery. They're also called the 3rd Infantry ID, also known as the Old Guard. They're the official presidential salute battery. We're at Donald Trump's ceremony on January 20th, 2021, playing Hail to the Chief, okay, as he exited Marine One on a red carpet rollout, and on the fourth ruffle, a 21-gun salute started. He is the first president in United States history to leave D.C., to leave post 11.59.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Air Force One. And also present that day on Joint Base Andrews was both Air Force Ones. There's two Air Force Ones. Okay? Here's the other troll. This is the bed. This is so... I, I love... Sometimes I do Joe Biden first, but it's just better to leave Joe second. So... This is so freaking awesome. On January the 20th, 2021, Joe Biden was given and received a full grade military regulation funeral service. <laughs> it's so freaking hilarious. I can't even stand it. CNN, I have the actual link of CNN and CBS and all those, CBS especially, they did an inauguration uh, like page that day. And they put a, a troop on there. He had on ACU pattern uniform with a multi-cam uh, Kevlar vest. He also had on the wrong patches, wrong insignia, okay, um, he also had a lot of equipment that was not standard gray military. All right. All of the uniforms around Biden that day were non-regulation military uniforms, meaning Hollywood could have done a better job that day. The other thing by symbolization and military regulations, more specifically, outside of the uniform, the reason why the uniform is most important to me to bring up first is the fact that we die in that uniform. That's why everything in that uniform is sacred, okay? That's why we don't wear them in bars or we don't wear them out. We're not supposed to because it's sacred. People die in that uniform, okay? So that's why I bring that up first. But they left the Capitol building that day in a funeral procession. That's why optics are important. It looked like a funeral procession, okay? And they go down to the tomb of the unknown soldier, all right? The camera crew with CNN and CBS and all of them were very tricky. They did this on purpose. But you had to be listening. When you can't see, you have to listen if you can, okay? So that day, they did. They swapped the camera a bunch of times. But there was a three-gun volley, all right? They call that in the military a three-volley salute, it is for military funerals only. There's three artillery pieces there. Two for fire and one for misfire. Okay? They fired 13 rounds. 13 rounds. The camera kept bouncing back and forth. 13 rounds were fired. It's not a salute. Okay? You go to the chart. We actually have a chart you can go look up. 21, 19, 17, 15, 13. 11. Boom. 13. 13. You go read 13. Well, there's two categories for 13 fires, okay? The, there's there's this two, okay? You have Marine General or Rear Admiral. Well, we know he wasn't in the Navy. We know he wasn't in the Marines or the Army. So you go to the next category, which was Minister Resident, okay? You look at Minister Resident. What is the definition of Minister Resident? A person who takes up temporary residence in a foreign territory. That's the definition of minister resident. And out to the side shows another very key thing. The only song they played all day for Joe Biden was not Hail to the Chief. It was Honors March 1. Okay. Well, Rear Admiral and 
Major General, they play Honors March 2, 3, or 4. For Minister Resident, the only song out on the chart is Honors March 1, which is what was played for Joe Biden that day. Military Regulation Funeral Service. Happened right in front of all of you. The other thing that just happened recently that everybody was inquiring about that knew about my documents is executive privilege and the uh, the raid on Mar-a-Lago, which if you'd have been listening to me and reading my storylines this whole time, you would have known what's going on. All this is optics. All that. It's all acting. It's all a stage. Because if you knew law and if you knew regulation from Donald Trump's four years, and if you witness the National Guard activated, and you, you know what was going on, okay? But you don't. So, the raid on Mar-a-Lago. There's a picture that I sent to my mother today, and I sent it to a few other people that I correspond with every day, and I said, find the key word in it. And I've got them so well on top of this now that they, they picked it out just like that. Executive privilege. Out of that whole tweet that Donald Trump put up, that key word, executive privilege. The only person who can exert executive privilege is a sitting current president. Not a former president. Not a past president. A current sitting president. That is United States federal law. The only person who can exert executive privilege is the President of the United States of America. Okay? So, the mainstream media that you've been watching didn't start talking about executive privilege with Donald Trump until November 2021. Just a, just last year. Okay? The quote-unquote insurrection that y'all call happened January the 6th, 2021. Okay? So, November... I thought y'all think Joe Biden's president. So how did Trump exert executive privilege if he's not still president? I mean, I'm just telling you what the law says. You know, my dad says law hasn't been upheld for the last 60, 70 years. Well, why did they, why did they let him do it? Okay, so if you go look in the law books, if you go look, it says Congress has to exert that for him. That's weird. Congress has to exert it for the president? Do you think Congress supported President Trump any? Do you think the current Congress that you think Joe Biden's president for, you think they exerted privilege for him? First off, he's not sitting president, so that can't happen, right? So there's a bunch of double standards here. If he's not president, if he's civilian Trump, if he's a civilian right now, by law, the only person... Say it louder for the people in the back. The only person who can exert executive privilege is a current sitting president by United States federal law. So the law reads that Congress exerts that for him. Congress is the one who issues that for him and says, okay, this privileged material right here, these documents cannot be viewed because the president exerted executive privilege. So if he's not president, but he exerted it in November 2021, but you think Joe Biden was inaugurated on January the 20th, 2021, which he wasn't. I just showed you by law and military that he received a military grade funeral service. How did President Trump exert his a privilege? Now, another thing I forgot about real quick. Let's go back to the funeral service for Mr. Joe Biden. The other thing Joe Biden did on January the 20th was he swore in at 11.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is a violation of the 20th Amendment of the Constitution of America, which specifically says the president's term is to end and begin at 12 o'clock noon. Imagine that. Imagine if Americans just knew what the law said of this country. And the reason why I can prove that all the law is being backed up, Dad, and people out there who still don't want to listen, I even have some family that's still just, they're skeptical. I'm like, look, 
I watch a flight app all day. My MOS in the military was air and missile defense. And I lived and breathed it. Okay? Love it. I still love it. I still live and breathe it. I watch a flight app every day. I can show you via 2,000 pictures and counting more to come of aircraft in the sky. Matter of fact, a while ago, the doomsday plane was in the air, which is the nuclear protection plane for the president. It's been active about four times this week. The other plane, the first plane of this operation, I haven't seen it fly yet until yesterday, is a W a WC-135R Constant Phoenix, which is an aircraft that detects, already detects, nuclear explosions. It was flying out in the Atlantic coast, okay? Way out in the water. We also don't train out in international waters, okay? That's another thing that don't happen. Our aircraft have to have a reason to be out there. The other thing that happened this week, while I'm getting on the aircraft topic, is we've had three days in a row where 10 aircraft have flown into D.C. or over the White House. By federal regulations, the FAA, FAA.gov, federal regulations, the District of Columbia, not the White House, the District of Columbia, has a 33-mile no-fly zone radius. We've had 10 aircraft, military aircraft, fly directly over the White House or buy it this week alone. And I have many more documents showing aircraft over it. And also, the old Pazaki, the former press secretary, the actress, told you April the 16th last year, she was live on her acting job. And, ooh, did you hear that? There was a plane directly overhead. Boom. That should have told you right there. Okay, so... Everything you've been watching is nothing but a movie, okay? Somewhere down the road, you're going to be able to, especially when mil military tribunals pop up and you see everything come out, you're going to know that, holy crap, I thought my buddy Derek was crazy, but he specifically said everything about military law, military regulations, the Constitution, and federal law. Nothing I'm saying is an opinion. It all happened right in front of you. I'm just interpreting what happened for you by law and by military regulations, orders, operations, symbols. And there's a lot of it. I mean, I can keep going. The other aircraft that was in the sky, and I'm going to talk about next, is why Joe Biden also isn't president, is because of Gitmo. A lot of you have never heard of what Gitmo is. I, I remember telling a few people uh, about Gitmo, and they're like, what is Gitmo? And I'm like, Guantanamo Bay. Okay, a lot of you don't know about Gitmo. And there's been four or five aircraft, one today, with the call sign Gitmo, leaving Mar-a-Lago area, headed to Gitmo, okay? November the, no, it's December the 29th, 2021. So this is past Christmas. This past Christmas, New York Times had an article, present tense, present tense, that Donald Trump, President Trump, said President Trump and the Pentagon are expanding. In present tense, it said President Trump and the Pentagon are expanding Gitmo by $500 million with more courtrooms and more space to hold thousands and tens of thousands more criminals. Okay? Here's why Joe Biden also isn't president. Not for the fact I just quoted you all these laws and regulations, but also for the fact in his campaign, he swore up and down and he told you he was going to shut down Gitmo. I'm going to shut down Gitmo. It's inhumane. Blah, 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 blah. If Joe Biden was president, there ain't a thing, there ain't a thing that no one could do to stop him from shutting down Gitmo. By law, he has executive power to shut down Gitmo. Why hasn't he done it? He had a speech in January, no, it was February 2021 and September, which was all an optic for people like me. For you out there that didn't know what was going on, though, you're sitting there watching this and he's telling you he's going to shut down Gitmo. And in December, the New York Times, who hates Donald Trump, is telling everybody on their publication that President Trump and the Pentagon are expanding, present tense and future tense, expanding Gitmo by $500 million and space for tens of thousands more criminals. 
I mean, it's all right in front of you. The other thing he did that shows he's not president, two different things. He expanded Executive Order 13848. Why would a president expand an order that the former president When President Biden, as y'all call him, I don't call him that. He's not president. By law, he's not president. By regulation, he's not president. By optics, he's not president. Why would he expand? Why would he why would he expand an order that specifically says in that order a national emergency, which was declared because of voter fraud, maritime which was because of the national emergency and voter fraud. And then an election committee. All in that order. Why would he expand that for a year? That makes no sense. If you know anything about law, it, it, it would make no sense why a president who is being accused of voter fraud would expand an executive order that's going to damn him because of that. I mean, think of that. That alone right there should go. All right. The other thing he did, Donald Trump is the one who secured the $777 billion defense budget. Joe Biden said, I don't want to sign it. I'm not going to sign it. Not going to. The Joe Biden that y'all think is president, that y'all think is even real. I'm not doing this. Why did he sign the defense budget? All right. And nothing he's done, if you thought he's really president, and I can't show you by law and regulations, which are why we're even here in this country, it's why you have this country. All I've done is show you all those laws and, and orders. But if you're still going to walk away from this video and think that Joe Biden is actually president, I mean, I mean, it, it baffles me, first off, that, that law and order can't show you. But Joe Biden signs a defense budget that he didn't even want to sign. He could shut down Gitmo. He ain't done it. Where y'all at? You know, where you at? All right, extension. What else was I going to say? Executive privilege. There's so many things someone asked me about the address, and I'm trying to remember what people asked me to address. Um... But, you know, I can always start another live video because I'm sure this one's long enough. Um, but, you know, the National Guard are active everywhere. If I could pull up the, if I could minimize my screen here. Uh, but, I mean, I've got, I've got 2,000 pictures and I update that document every single day with nothing but, but National Guard everywhere, the doomsday plane. Um, there's so many things happening. Um, and I hate it. I really hate the fact that so many people are still playing politics on all these different platforms when they can show you the people what's going on. It wasn't a secret. If it was a secret, they'd be flying no radar every day. They wouldn't be flying where you could see them and track them. You wouldn't be able to do that because I know well, I've flown blackout before. I know what that's like. Um, so they, they would black out everything and, and I wouldn't be able to track it myself because I'm not active duty and I don't have active clearance. Um, but they would black it out. It's not blacked out. There are so many aircraft in the sky today. It was a madhouse in the sky today. And every single day since January 2021, there's been no less than 300 military aircraft. No less than 300 military air aircraft in the sky every single day. Every single day. You know, and it's, a, it's sad. It's sad that I have 3,000 and something friends on Facebook and I've got nine people watching. I mean, that's where we are in society. I don't want to build a platform, and I'm not trying to run for Congress or anything like that. I don't have that kind of money, first off. Um, but it's sad that we have so many veterans in this country. We have a portion of veterans that know what's going on and are trying to tell you guys by the generosity of our hearts and because we love this country, we love what we did, we love this nation, we love our brothers and sisters that are still serving, we love... Everything about the military, its way of life, and, and, you know, your way of life and everything. You know, I have friends that are black, Hispanic, gay, you know, uh, atheists, uh, Buddhists. I, I mean, I've got friends all walks of life. 
And, you know, we want you to have your life. You know, the Constitution, the original Constitution protects that. And, you know, all this stuff out there, there's a lot of things that people have got to learn to separate that are opinion versus what the law actually says. You know, and the Constitution and the foundation of America is for you. It's for every single walk of life. It's for every single choice. You know, and I'm not going to get into all that because I'll be you know, made some people mad on that. But, you know, you should be able to do whatever you want to do at your house. You should be able to do whatever you want to do. You should be able to do that. Ain't nobody should tell you that you can't. So I'm sure I'm going to make a few people mad on that. But, you know, the Constitution and Marbury versus Madison, 1803, we've had too many people try to misconstrue that, misuse it, overuse it to fit their narrative and to fit their standard and to fit that group, okay? Whatever group it is, whether it's conservative or not, there's too many of that. The original foundation and constitution protected everybody as a whole. And then Marbury versus Madison specifically says, Marbury versus Madison, 1803, specifically says, any law that bears the statute of a law, if it doesn't back the Constitution, it is null and void. And we have plenty of crap on the law books that don't back up the Constitution. And so Donald Trump, when he issued national emergencies that didn't get addressed, then he issued presidential emergencies that didn't get addressed. Therefore, he had to take actions by the president, powers of the president, war powers of the president, and activate the guard and put the military in control. And they've been in control. They're still in control. For all of you out there that don't understand why Biden is a puppet and why gas prices and all this is like that, well, you're just going to have to sign up to my documents. I don't have the time of the day to sit here and explain all that unless I did have that time of the day. But that video would be long, long, long. It's already long now. It's already so long that only nine people have stayed around for it, and we got up to about 20 uh, out of 3,000 and something. So that shows you how pathetic of a nation we are. It shows you how pathetic people's attention spans are. It shows you that people truly only care about drama and themselves at the end of the day. And that's what we got to change. We got to get back to the basics of life, the basics of communication, and we got to get back to talking about things. We got to get back to eye to eye and mouth to mouth conversations. Not, none of this bull crap here. That don't cut it. That don't solve anything. So these attention spans that can't watch a video that tells you law, regulations based on the foundation of this nation is why we are where we are right now. It's why we're there. Because everything that I have in those documents, law, orders, regulations. Everything you've witnessed in the last five years is the most monumental, historical, covert operation to date. And Donald Trump is your president by law, by order, and by regulations of military and constitution. And the way it's proven is the fact that not only by law that you could go back and read, but most of you are too lazy to do it, but it's by National Guard who are in disguise right now as we speak, outside of their state and outside of this country. Activated. The orders have not been rescinded. They're still active. The only person who put them there and the only, the only activations of National Guard came through Donald John Trump. That's it. Joe Biden hadn't done anything. He hadn't even, even if he was real and was a president, he hadn't done anything about his own policies. The only thing he did, if you thought he was real, and I didn't know what I knew, he uh, he did a national defense like thing where he, he brought the baby formula. But if you watched what planes were flying it, you would know that Donald John Trump is your president because the planes that brought it over here were the National Guard. So 
optics. I have a full document full of optics. And it can show you so many things that happen right in front of you. And you go, holy crap. But, you know, you got to be able, you got to want to read and you got to want to listen. And you got to want to step outside of what you've thought your whole life and step outside of it. Because I can tell you right now, there's so many veterans in this country who have done so many things for you. And, and there's, it, you just would never dream what goes on in one day in the military, much less a week, much less a month, much less a year. And, uh, you know, so many of you that want to talk about your cousins and your family that serve, you know, that's great. But, you know, if they're active, if they have clearance, they can't tell you what's going on by oath and also by honor. So, you know, all this bull crap and, and things like that, and people want to say, well, my cousin served and blah, 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 blah. You know, great. I, what do you want me to say? Thank you for their service too. I don't know what you want us to do. But none of that has anything to do with military law and military regulations. If they don't know that, then I question their duty. You know, I question it. Uh, don't mean they're not a good person. It don't mean they don't have a good heart. Don't mean they, ain't, they don't have a smart brain. But there's a reason why you serve in the military. We have our own law. We have our own regulation. We have symbols and things like that. So, you know, I did the best I could by summarizing this. But, you know, that's that's not even, that's that's barely a drop in the bucket of what law looks like and uh, what this covert op operation looks like. I just took the basic core, but if you read those documents, like most people have, everybody that's ever signed up for them, they text me or call me or write me and say, holy crap, dude, this is freaking phenomenal. It's insane. And I'm like, well, I know that I these hands and this brain typed it, but it's just straight up military law, military regulation, the Constitution, federal law, United States codes, um, all broken down. Um, you know, it's nothing that, that, it's not like something I came up with, like a company. It's not like a song that I wrote. Um, it's just straight up law, and everybody should know that. Everybody should want to know that. And it should be exciting to know that, that there's a covert operation going on behind the scenes and that the good boys are in charge. The good guys are in charge. Um, and uh, they're in full control. And everything's going smooth. Um, and, you know, you should want to know that. I just, it just baffles me that so many people are so, like, on edge for learning law and learning regulations and learning that the National Guard are in control of the country. I, I mean, it baffles me that someone would go, are you off your meds today? Like, over law? It, you know, it's like when people find out that, that there's more music besides Top 25. Why are you getting mad? You know, it's just, if you like it, it's just more music for your playlist. Why are you getting all bent out of shape? You know, why? It's exciting. It's exciting for veterans to, to see all that stuff happen, especially when you know that Joe Biden received a funeral service by military-grade regulation. When you go, oh, Oh my gosh, uh, wow, three gun volley, oh look at there, 13 rounds fired, oh look at there, uh, honors march one, I mean, to know that is freaking, it's, it's hilarious, it's the most ultimate troll move ever by a military and the president, and then to go over and see the fact that Donald Trump received a full grade constitutional and military regulated inauguration. So it's all going to come out. I see we're down to five people. Woo! Five people. I love the five that are on there because I know who you are. I'm not janking on y'all. I'm janking on the ones that, that left. I mean, that's, that's how pathetic of a nation we've gotten. A pathetic nation that we got. I've got five people out of 3,000 and something that aren't watching. 
I just think it's it's such a atrocity for America. It's an atrocity for the boys and girls that are in uniform right now fighting, that are in the sky right now as we speak, that are on the ground in every country. It's an atrocity that so many people don't understand and then don't have the appreciation of what's going on. And a guy who's just sitting there telling you about military law, and military regulations, the Constitution, and federal law, what's going on. I think it's an atrocity. So, anyways, love you guys.